deflation has officially arrived in Europe. Data released Wednesday show that consumer prices fell in the Eurozone for the first time since the global financial crisis in 2009. The consensus was that inflation would drop to about zero or negative 0.1 percent. But in the year to December, consumer prices dropped 0.2 percent. And with oil prices still dwindling, it's clear that falling consumer price inflation still has further to go. So basically, it's the decline in oil prices that has pushed inflation over the zero mark. That said, even before the recent collapse in oil prices, inflation in the region had been falling amidst a slump in spending for both consumers and businesses. Also, a separate report from Eurostat showed that Eurozone jobless rates in November were unchanged at 11.5 percent. In Germany, which is the Eurozone's biggest economy, unemployment dipped to 6.4 percent in December, down from 6.5 percent the previous month. But in the second and third largest Eurozone economies, France and Italy respectively, the jobless rates climbed and Italian unemployment rose to a new high of 13.4 percent. All of this now puts even more pressure on the European Central Bank to act in order to prevent a downward economic spiral which could potentially weaken growth for years to come. This, combined with Mario Draghi's recent statements about the ECB's future plans, will most certainly increase expectations that the central bank will announce aggressive monetary measures when it meets in Frankfurt on January 22nd. Analysts are now expecting the ECB to effectively begin printing money, money that would be used to buy Eurozone government bonds, aka quantitative easing. That's what we know it as here. Many economists also fear that unemployment could rise again if the Eurozone succumbs to deflation. And when deflation takes root, consumers tend to delay purchases because they expect prices to fall even further. And if Japan's experience in the 1990s has shown us anything at all, it's that traditional monetary instruments are pretty much ineffective when nominal interest rates are at zero. One thing is for sure, Euroland is a mess. But whatever happens, we will be watching. To discuss the economy in the UK and the ECB, I was joined earlier today by Dr. Anne Pettifor. Now, Anne is a senior fellow at the New Economics Foundation in London and author of Just Money, How Society Can Break the Despotic Power of Finance. Recently, a shortfall in tax revenue for the UK government has called the ruling coalition's deficit reduction targets into question. Now, I first asked Anne if her view on whether the British economy is strong enough to meet Chancellor Osborne's deficit targets is real. Take a look at what she had to say. It precisely is that, which is that Chancellor Osborne's target has not been met. Um, he's switched. Uh, we're no longer talking about the deficit in cash terms. When he promised in 2010 that the, um, the deficit would be 37 billion pounds or so this time, by this time. In fact, it's now about 91 billion pounds and rising. Uh, but what's happened is the government is now talking about the deficit in terms of GDP, as a share of GDP. This is annoying quite a lot of people here, including people on his own side who claim that he is fiddling the numbers. In fact, it is a more rational way of talking about the deficit, and I quite welcome the fact that the government is no longer talking about the deficit in cash terms or as if it were just simply like a household budget. Um, but, you know, there's been a lot of contradictory stuff going on here. The fact is that um, the, the overall deficit now is about 5% of GDP, and that's higher than it is across all of the Eurozone, of course, and um, not as close, but it, the, the U.S. deficit at some point rose, if I'm not mistaken, around about 6%. And that's proved really quite helpful in terms of supporting the recovery. Um, but of course, that's not very well accepted here or understood. But um, it does look as if we're going into this election campaign with the deficit still very much a fetish in political discussions here. Whereas actually, we have much bigger things to worry about. We really have to worry about the fall in real incomes. We really have to worry about the um, external deficit, about the trade deficit, which is still expanding, even though 
sterling has fallen quite dramatically since 2010. There are other much bigger things to be worrying about the deficit than the deficit. But and indeed, then there is also the worry about the city of London and the fact that the banking system is still broken and uh, here in the UK and lending to uh, into the real economy is still not strong enough to to support a, a really healthy recovery which is why we've seen uh, in services for example a, a little wobble um, uh, in the last month or so so um, I, I mean we definitely there is a recovery but it's not in my view embedded enough and strong enough really and the government is still too obsessed with the budget deficit and not really focusing enough on rebalancing the economy. Now, it seems like the Tories are staking some of their general election hopes on being seen as the fiscally responsible party. So do you think a revenue shortfall means they'll deepen budget cuts on things like education and social programs to make the figures work as the general election comes closer? Yes, but uh, I, I'm not sure whether they will do that. I mean, they, he, he laid out his uh, manifesto, if you like, in the autumn statement and is now committed to carrying on these cuts in public spending. But it's not very popular and it's not helping his cause. And there is a particular crisis around uh, accident and emergency departments in the National Health Service. So right now in the middle of winter with the elderly and so on and so forth so so whether or not the script will be adhered to all all the way up to the election is to be seen uh, but it does seem as if the government has this ideological commitment if you like to shrinking uh, the public sector and the conservatives will certainly stick to that not at all clear <coughs> liberal democrats will and the Labour Party is, of course, uh, promising to increase expenditure. Now, you know, let's go across the English Channel to the Eurozone. And for months now, the European yeah. Central Bank has been under considerable pressure to meaningfully ease monetary policy as a way to prevent a deflation or debt deflation from taking hold. And on January 22nd, that's when the ECB meets again. So do you think they'll pull the trigger on QE at that time? Yes, I think they do, but I don't think it'll make any difference whatsoever, really. The markets have already priced in uh, QE, and, uh, and QE on its own, um, without, um, uh, without a sort of coordinating fiscal policy across the Eurozone, uh, is not going to do very much for the crisis inside the Eurozone. Um, I, I really don't... Um, I really think the, the Eurozone is reaching a point uh, which we may have been close to in 2010-11, where, you know, the question is going to be whether or not it's going to go for complete fiscal coordination across the Eurozone and have the sort of system you have in the United States where there are transfers from richer to poorer countries inside the Eurozone in order to be able to maintain stability, or whether or not there's going to be a breakup of this very bizarre and deeply flawed uh, economic framework. Uh, one based entirely on uh, monetary policy, um, and but in which the monetary uh, institution, the ECB, acts also as an enforcer of fiscal policy, um, and without a mandate to do so, if if, if you like, and without a, definitely a democratic mandate for that. So I, I feel the flaws at the eurozone are coming to a head, and Greece, of course, is where the flaw is most apparent. Absolutely. And we, we were talking a lot about Greece yesterday. But, Anne, it seems like people are focused on the ECB because there's no other powerful Eurozone wine entity that can prevent crisis. Now, here's the thing. 22 years ago, British economist Wayne Godley warned famously and persistently that this setup was doomed to fail. So do you think Godley is being proved right? Mm. I think he's absolutely being proved right. And um, what is astonishing is that um, the Eurozone has kept going um, since 2009 um, and that the Euro has remained strong, uh, presumably because of the strength of the German economy. Um, but the contradictions at the centre, at the heart of this framework, are now intensifying. And if Greek, Greece and it uh, looks as if Spiros 
may well win, as if Syriza might well win this election, and will then begin, begin to demand uh, a renegotiation of the debt. If that happens, then we can see Portugal and Italy following <coughs> too. And that will really break the kind of economic framework on which, and which I think, the monetarist framework, if you like, on which the Eurozone is built and which is so flawed. Um, so I think we're getting to a crunch point here, and I really don't think the ECB is the only European-wide institution, but it is operating, it is deciding to take action, too little action, in my view, too late. Um, the one thing that the ECB and the rest of the Eurozone has been incredibly Euro uh, uh, complacent about is the threat of deflation. I heard that Mr. Weidmann, Jens Weidmann of the Bundesbank, talked about good in deflation. I hear voices here in Britain uh, from the Institute for Economic Affairs, for example, talking about there's good deflation and bad deflation. There ain't no such thing as good deflation. And deflation is terrifying because the ECP does not have the tools to tackle deflation across the Eurozone. Interest rates can scarcely go lower than they are. Um, you know, pumping money in, pushing, pushing it on the string is not going to help as prices, profits in, spiral downwards and unemployment rises upwards. Um, we don't know how to uh, manage deflation. We have not ever lived through a deflationary era. Um, and we have been obsessed for ideological reasons, I think, because of creditor bias in uh, policy making. We've been obsessed with inflation, and still, some people still are, as as um, as prices, both producer and consumer prices, fall in the eurozone, and as producer prices have been falling in China for three years now. It's as if. Um, as if <laughs> Our policymakers can't see what's really hitting them in the face, and that is that is quite worrying from my point of view. That was Dr. Anne Pettifor, author and senior fellow at the New Economics Foundation. Time now for a quick break, but stick around because when we return, Dean Baker will be on the show. 